Hi, this is Gary Brooker here from Procol Harum, and you're on Icon Fetch. <laughs> Welcome to Icon Fetch, the web's premier music interview show. Now, here's your host, Tony Peters. It is the most famous unreleased album in the history of rock and roll. Smile from the Beach Boys was originally supposed to be the follow-up to their critically acclaimed Pet Sounds album and was supposed to come out way back in 1967. But for a variety of reasons, it was never completed, and the tapes have sat in the archives ever since. Now, it's been heavily bootlegged through the years, and little bits and pieces have snuck out on various collections. But there has never been an entire collection solely devoted to the Smile Project. Well, that is going to change on November 1st, when Capitol and EMI release the Smile Sessions in a two-disc standard edition and a five-disc deluxe edition, which also includes a vinyl two-disc LP as well. Now, this includes highlights of the sessions of Smile, outtakes, demos, and on disc one, uh, an estimation of the Smile album for the first time pieced together to the best of their abilities with the recordings that were done back in 66 and 67. Now, co-produced by Mark Lynette, Alan Boyd, and Brian Wilson, we just so happen to have one of the guys that helped put it together, co-producer Mark Lynette, who has worked with the Beach Boys in a variety of projects through the years. He's worked on the Beach Boys Twofers, the Pet Sound Sessions Box, and Brian Wilson's solo material as well. We want to welcome to the program Mark Lynette. How are you, Mark? I'm doing great, thank you. Man, I, I tell you what, do we have to pinch you here? This has got to be an exciting time for you. <laughs> well, it's uh, 23 years since I first dipped my toe into this project, and 45 years since the project began. So it's quite a quite a, quite an occasion to finally have it uh, being released uh, the first of November. Right. No, absolutely. And you know, it, it's interesting because I know when you worked on the Pet Sound Sessions box. I mean, we're talking like mid 90s here. There was talk that Smile would come out then. I mean, why has it taken so long? I mean, is, is it just seems crazy that it's that you know what that's like 15 years later kind of thing. Well, I think I think the main reason is that um, until 2004, when Brian revisited the project and uh, performed it live and re recorded his version, uh, a solo version of it, there was nothing assembled. All we had was a bunch of bits and pieces and a you know a few songs that were more or less completed later. And without some kind of a sequence, you know, from the artist, uh, it would have just sort of been a jumble of sessions. And I think, frankly, and still Brian, you know, felt comfortable that after all that time, he was able to finish what he started. There really wasn't anything, you know, to seriously talk about. Right. No, exactly. And uh, and the, the Brian Wilson Smile collection uh, was a, a new, that's where he, he got with his band and he um, re-recorded all the, the Smile songs and put it in a, in a cohesive order for the first time. You were involved with that project as well. Um, how much of that was used as a blueprint for the new Smile Sessions? Yeah, it sort of was the basis for sort of the album session version that's presented on, on disc one. There, there are some changes. I mean, Brian made a few changes for this release, and then, of course, there are arrangement changes between uh, the way they did it in 2004 and the way it had been done in, in uh, 66. But as I said, the, the version from 2004 is the way that Brian, you know, completed the project. What's important to understand is that when it was abandoned in, in early 1967, there was no there was no sequence, uh, much less a, a, a finished album. Uh, this isn't a project where uh, you know an album that was completed was just you know shelved for one reason or another, and we're we're bringing it back after all this time. I mean, it was largely unfinished and unsequenced. And it certainly wouldn't have been what it became in 2004. For one thing, the, the album runs about 48 minutes, and there's no indication that, that a three-sided album was ever contemplated uh, in, in uh, 667. So you, you, can, you can assume that probably 20 minutes of what had been recorded uh, during that period probably would not have made the, uh, the final album had it been completed in 67. Having all that to draw on, in 2004, however, Brian you know, used everything he thought made sense, um, and I can't really speak to whether 
I mean, I know, I know that what he used was what, what he always felt should have been part of the project, but probably realistically couldn't all have been part of Smile had it been released in 67. Right, no, absolutely, because in, in 1967, that's before the White Album. I think, you know, that's before Blonde on Blonde. I mean, who had put out double albums at that point? And, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, we're drifting to that. I mean, the first Mother's Invention album, Freak Out, is a double album. But this would have presented another interesting problem is that it really is three sides, not right, right, not, not four. We've taken advantage of that and, and filled the fourth side with, uh, you know, alternate mixes and, and demos. But one thing we've done on this, on this set is that even at five CDs and 245s and an extra LP side that's um, unique to the set, we still had a tough time fitting everything that we wanted into the box. We wow. easily have expanded to a, another CD or two. We've, we've covered pretty much everything from this time period with a, maybe a few small exceptions. We have uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 70, 75 uh, individual sessions for the project, and they, they're all represented in the, in, the, in the box. They're all represented um, in sort of you know, the fly-on-the-wall fashion, so you get a sense of what the uh, creative process was like both vocally and at the tracking session. And, and all, all five CDs on the box set are over, uh, over 79 minutes each. Wow. Um, now, you've been involved with the Beach Boys, um, you said, what, 24 years? Um, uh, you know, I, I, yeah, it's, 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 it's yeah, roughly 24 years. Right. I started working with Brian in 87 uh, on his first uh, solo album. Right, right. Okay. Well, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, you've worked on a lot of projects before where you're you know, overseeing, you know, remastering and that kind of stuff. This has to be a, a unique situation because you kind of get to be a little more part of the creative process of, of this. Because, I mean, this really was bits and pieces of songs that are all sort of strung together kind of thing. Well, that's true. But, again, looking at what, how Brian completed the project uh, in 2004, you know, really gave us something to work with. I mean, without that, I mean, somebody had to decide you know, what the finished order would, you know, would be. Right. And uh, fortunately, we, you know, we have Brian's, um, as I said, Brian did finish the project in, in 2004, and that gave us something to go on. And, and he's happy with that. So if, if he had radically wanted to change uh, the order for this release, that's what we, we would have done. It really was more, um, more about the sheer volume of material and the fact, the way it, a lot of it was recorded in, in a modular form, which he sort of started doing with the Good Vibrations, that made this a complicated and very time-consuming project. And, and I might add that had we, <laughs> you refer back to doing it in 96, the other problem with doing it then w uh, would have been technical. When we did the Pet Sounds box, uh, and we only had, you know, basically 13, 14 sessions to deal with, we were still having to uh, edit those sessions um, on, on uh, analog tape and doing uh, razor blade edits. Mm, wow. And that project, I don't remember exactly how long it took, but that plus the stereo mix still took a fair amount of time. This is, you know, maybe let's just say roughly 10, 10 times as complex, and were it not for uh, advances in, in uh, digital computer editing, um, both in terms of editing the sessions and in terms of assembling uh, all the various pieces that comprise some of these songs, um, this project could have taken, you know, a lifetime. Right. And uh, I think it's actually, I think it's also one of the reasons that the project, you know, wasn't completed in any, any number of times. I mean, in 67, you know, when, when uh, Brian uh, decided to abandon it and then later, you know, uh, his brother Carl thought they would complete it. I, I, think, I think looking at the complexity of it coupled with the limits of, uh, of, of the technology of the day uh, made it, I won't say impossible, but made it very, very difficult to contemplate finishing the project uh, at that time. As I like to say, I mean, Smile seems to be a project that, that was begun, uh, you know, 20 or 30 years before the, the, te the needed technology was really available. Unlike most pop albums, Smile is much more like putting a film together than um, uh, a conventional uh, uh, recording. And that's, and that's kind of how the whole project has gone uh, in that we've started with this huge amount of material, uh, both in terms of the album assembly and, and in terms of the sessions, and, and slowly had to edit it, you know, edit, edit it down to 
a releasable length. I mean, I think we started out with something like seven or eight roughly edited CDs, then 